Money has always been a pivotal institution for every society that ever existed, but it is still one of the most misunderstood concepts in the history of humankind. Therefore, it has always been a subject of various myths concerning its emergence, evolution and nature. The extensive use of everyday expressions such as earning money or having lots of money implies that the term has effectively substituted the words income and wealth, contributing additionally to the misconception of what money means. Frederick Mishkin gives one of the broadest definitions in the literature by describing it as anything that is generally accepted in payment for goods and services or the repayment of debts. The studies concerning the nature of money are captured within the framework of two well-established theories, the commodity theory of money and the credit theory of money. The origin of this debate is long-standing and can be traced back to Aristotle and Plato. Aristotle claims that something can function as money only if it has an intrinsic value, which makes precious metals suitable candidates. Furthermore, that selected object must be easy to standardize, be divisible, price stable, durable, transportable, scarce, and prone to counterfeit. This theory established itself under the name commodity theory of money, or as the metalist theory of money. The contrary viewpoint concerning the nature of money was embraced by Plato, who reasoned that the currency should be an arbitrary symbol to measure value, making its intrinsic value and physical existence as a commodity obsolete. This rival theory is known as the credit theory of money. Its proponents assume that money is not a physical commodity, but just credit. The first known works on the theory are Henry MacLeod's theory of credit, and the two research papers of Alfred Mitchell Innes, What is Money? and The Credit Theory of Money. The ideas within the credit theory of money can be summarized with the following words. The eye has never seen nor the hand touched the dollar. All that we can touch or see is a promise to pay or satisfy a debt due for an amount called a dollar. There is no such thing as a medium of exchange. Every sale or purchase is the exchange of a commodity or service for credit. Credit and credit alone is money. A monetary unit, a dollar for example, is an abstract standard for the measurement of credit and debt. When you sell something, you get credit. A purchase without having credit creates debt. The purpose of commerce is the acquisition of credits. The idea of debt creation dates back to primitive societies. Exactly like nowadays, people in those societies were giving gifts to each other. I give something to you, or you give something to me, and that creates a credit-debt relationship. You get the idea. Furthermore, David Graeber observes that credit systems arise in times of peace, but get replaced by the commodity system under conditions of war. Just imagine a situation of war where you can loot the gold or silver, which wouldn't function with something that is simply recorded on a piece of paper or on something else, such as credit. In the current economic system, the dollar and other national currencies function as a measure of the value of things without being itself a commodity. Therefore, the dollar in its nature is an immaterial and abstract idea, like a second or kilogram, but it has proven that it can perform well as an accurate measure of value over long periods. Furthermore, that can serve as a mean of payment, as it was the case with the Talistics in Britain and during the Irish bank crisis in the 1970s. In both cases, promises to pay, recorded on a wooden stick or a piece of paper, were circulating in the economy as a mean of payment. To conduct their transactions, the people in both societies couldn't rely on any financial institutions as intermediaries, but the mutual trust in the community held the economic activity afloat. This can work only as long as people collectively agree that the selected mean of payment can be used as money. From this perspective of the credit theory of money, there is no necessity to back the debt with a commodity. Hence, the debt's value corresponds solely to the indebted person's solvency. The next video will be about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Stay tuned. If you are interested in geopolitics, international relations, economics and history and want to see more videos on those topics, you can hit the subscribe button. And if you want to earn cryptocurrencies while browsing the internet, you can check the Brave browser, the link is in the description. Take care, see you in the next video.